Camp David that ha has been a place of such wonderful things that have happened in the past. You know, negotiations between nation states can happen there, but a terrorist organization that doesn't recognize nation states, that kills innocent women and children, that denies women the right to really even be in the same room as their husbands is just a minor part of the terrible things that they do. To have them at Camp David uh, is totally unacceptable. That's Congressman Adam Kinzinger. He's one of a growing number of Republicans who are also blasting the president's move to try and meet with the Taliban just days before the 18th anniversary of 9-11. It's beyond tone deaf for a whole host of reasons, a few of which were just touched on. Firstly, why even talk about the Taliban that as families and survivors prepare for yet another grueling reminder of what happened on that horrific day 18 years prior? Plus, Camp David, it holds a special place in American history. Historical achievements like the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt were negotiated there. In fact, they are called the Camp David Accords. Well, new reports saying that advisors were trying to talk Trump out of trying to set up his secret meeting with the Taliban. Even Mike Pence and the National Security Advisor John Bolton were reportedly against it. Trump, however, didn't listen. Of course, the president, he's denying all those reports. Now, Trump surprised just about everybody when he tweeted out Saturday the Taliban leaders would meet with him at Camp David on Sunday. In the same tweet, he said he's canceling the meeting that after a bombing in Kabul killed 12 people, including one American soldier. Then there was the latest controversy involving the president and Russia. CNN exclusively reporting that in 2017, the U.S. extracted a high-level spy from inside of the Russian government. The report says that several administration officials have corroborated the story. Now I'm going to read a portion of the report, quote, the removal of the Russian was driven in part by concerns that President Donald Trump and his administration repeatedly mishandled classified intelligence and could contribute to exposing a covert source as a spy. Now, the story goes on to say the decision to extract the spy came after a May 2017 meeting between Trump, the Russian foreign minister, and the Russian ambassador where the president shared classified info that was provided by Israel that Israel intel concerned ISIS in Syria. And that episode raises new concerns about all the private conversations the president has had with Vladimir Putin. Now, Trump, he's been very secretive about those meetings with the Russian head, and some of them, it was only the two presidents and their interpreters, and the notes have never, to this day, seen the light of day. He's even hidden has Trump information about the meetings from his own advisors. CIA, they're denying the story about the spy calling it, quote, misguided speculation. State Department releasing a statement saying the report inaccurate. I should say CNN standing by the story with as many as five sources corroborating. Well, joining me now is foreign policy expert and member of the Chicago Council on Foreign Affairs, Michael Santo. And Michael, let's first start off with that Russian story, because when you read through the reporting, and I've seen um, Jim Shuto, who was one of the principal sources on it, they're not only staying by it. They said there's a lot more to this story that corroborates it, but at the emesis, the intelligence apparatus up and down the food chain does not trust the president when it comes to Russia, whether it's because he's compromised, he's an oversharer, whatever the reason is, they don't trust him. And part of the decision in 2017 to go in and get that asset was because they were afraid, literally, the president was working against American intelligence interests by oversharing with the Russians. Well, we see this the whole time of his entire presidency. And even in the campaign, he was praising Russian operations in Syria as if Russia was trying to help us fight ISIS when they were not. Um, and by the way, the Russians support Taliban and probably other terrorists. They have a long history of support for terrorism, by the way. So he is definitely compromised. The intelligence community never trusted uh, this president. It's clear there were reports that they even warned Israelis to be careful what they shared with the White House before President Trump even assumed office. But, Michael, it's, it's one of two. It's not like this is a buffet of possibilities. One is... The president couldn't help um, as soon as a Russian came in to, to, you know, be able to say, hey, look what I learned today. Or, and I don't think you need a tinfoil hat for this one. The more nefarious thing is, wait a minute, we've got information that could be additive to Putin. We're going to give it to the Russian premier, putting not only at life this intelligence asset that is extremely hard to cultivate in a non-friendly country, but moreover than that, 
It's against our own national interest. That information and intelligence, share with my audience just how valuable it could be to have someone way up the food chain in, in Moscow that could be giving us information, whether it be about military movements or other. No, I mean, it's absolutely vital to have these assets. The United States has a long history of the last few, you know, the whole Cold War going back to obviously right after World War II, we've tried to cultivate people right inside of the Kremlin. We're in a very, very serious conflict with the Russians right now, and we need those sources. And to have lost a source so high up in the Kremlin is really bad. But what's even worse is nobody within our government or allied governments like Australia, uh, United Kingdom, Israel can trust the Trump administration and the White House. This is uncharted territory for our country. It's really, really bad. Trump may not fully realize that he's betraying the country. I think he largely thinks Putin is his friend and Putin thinks he's a fool. And he is a fool to think that Putin's his friend. Putin does not want President Trump to have a successful presidency. He does not want anything good to happen in the United States. The goal of Russia is to destabilize American society, delegitimize our democratic process, and discredit the United States globally and undermine the world order that has been sponsored and supported by Republican and Democratic presidents since 1945 for 70 years. Michael, you do not have to be a foreign policy whiz to say in the week that this current country grieves and remembers um, uh, the actions of September 11th and all those Americans we lost, that it wouldn't be a good idea to meet in Camp David with the Taliban, especially since there's been no even ground level negotiations to terms or anything else. This idea that the, uh, the culture of personality that somehow Trump is going to make um, you know, a, a terrorist organization still harbored um, or still at least considering Afghanistan's safe harbor, to have that conversation this week, that that would be considered in the realm of not horrific ideas, is nuts. This is not a tough call. Am I wrong? Well, I think the optics are uh, terrible. I think there is no semblance of a professional communications infrastructure in the White House. It's a very strange thing. Um, I don't think a president should be tweeting I don't think presidents should be handle, trying to handle uh, on their own key negotiations with any major leaders. You know, that's usually done by career and people with lifelong experience. And I don't think we've ever had a president who doesn't listen to briefings, doesn't read any of the material. So he's going into all these things cold. The reality is, to be honest, that pragmatically to stabilize Afghanistan, which is one of her major objectives in Afghanistan, and in addition to destroying the terrorists, al-Qaeda in particular, or anything like ISIS and other similar groups, is possibly to work with the Taliban. So strangely enough, you know, Trump says a lot of things and tries to do a lot of things that are frankly crazy. Trying to deal with the Taliban, I think the Pentagon and the CIA have played with that going back to, frankly, the Bush administration. It's not a black and white thing, because 9-11 was carried out by people from the Arab world rather than Af uh, Afghanistan. The Taliban harbored these terrorists, which is an act of war against the United States. But I think that the core problem really was in the Arab world. So I, I think we can separate the two. But the optics to do this at Camp David uh, around the time of 9-11, the anniversary, is, is terrible. So there, it's just not being handled in a professional way. It's literally some of the craziest stuff you never would have believed if it was a screenplay, but that's become the reality of the last three years. Michael Santo, thank you so much for a few minutes. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. All right, everybody, when we come back, we are going to shift gears here. Actually, I'm sorry if you're a Jet fan or Giant fan, but I'm going there. We're going to talk some sports, football, and inspiring if you're tennis, and the closing chapter of the regular season in baseball upon us. We've got it all after this quick commercial break.